good morning, welcome to worship, whether you're here in person or you are watching online. It's really good to have you with us, whether you're new or you've been many, many times before. Um, a particular welcome to Diane and to Phil, who are here. Diane's, uh, you've been before, but it's lovely to have you back with us, so thank you, very welcome. Oh. And if you're also new and we haven't caught your names yet, then um, you're welcome to, and we'll, we'll endeavour to do that after the meeting. Just a few announcements uh, for us before we start worship. Next Sunday, the 2nd of July, worship is at the usual time at 10.30, um, but it is the farewells of Major Andrew and Valerie. So we'll be saying goodbye to them. Uh, we're going to follow uh, that with a faith lunch. So if you can bring something along and would like to share with us after that, then please do. Karen's organising this. So apparently that's what it says on my notes. So uh, if Karen's not, then it's just going to be help yourselves and we'll just, uh, we'll, we'll muddle through. No, um, next Saturday, uh, sorry, Saturday after that, the 8th of July at seven o'clock is our last night of the proms. Um, this is a last night of the movies and then our usual proms in the second half. So there'll be all the usual things and then there'll be some additional pieces, James Bond, Star Wars, Brassed Off, Tangled, lots of things for you to come and enjoy. Entry is £5 for over 18s, or it's free if you are 18 or under. Um, we should also say the day after that, uh, the band is uh, putting on a, um, an afternoon concert in Stratford. This is the thing that we do every year, followed by the Stratford Songs of Praise. If you are new to the core and you don't know, a lot of us go over to Stratford for the afternoon. I think that's 230 Lovely, I've got the nod. And then I believe the Songs of Praise is 4.30. Oh, I'm on a roll. So, so um, those are the times you need to know. Head over to Stratford if you're able to do that around about two o'clock-ish, uh, half one, two, and come and enjoy that. So that is Sunday, the 9th of July. Just a couple of other reminders. Uh, one is to say that Calvin um, has been asking for toiletries. This is for Axome. They're hoping to put some together, packs together for clients just to help them when they first arrive as a welcome pack. So he's looking for toiletries. For that, they can be dropped off um, to me during the week or to him when he returns. If you'd like to just donate financially to this rather than bring toiletries in, if you prefer to do that, then we can also take money for that. So that's just to support clients as they move into AXO, one of our homeless centres. And finally, just some sad news uh, for you. If you, you haven't already heard, Frida Sadler was promoted to glory on Monday night. Um, Derek is still very, very unwell too. So we, we think specifically of the, the family and continue to, to pray for them, please, at this time. We don't have any details of the funeral as it stands, but as soon as we know something, we will get that out to you. So um, just to, to make you aware of that. So just before we share together on what will be a fantastic uh, YP anniversary, I'm sure, let's share a prayer. Lord, we come today to you and we just uh, are so thankful for the young people within our core Lord, they're not the future of the core, they are the present, and they are as important as every single person in this building. Lord, we thank you for all that they bring and all that they offer. We thank you that at such a young age, they devote their lives to you, and that sometimes uh, that childhood simplicity um, of loving you is, is so, so beautiful, and, and sometimes we as adults make things so much more complicated. Lord, we thank you for the, the children, for what they're going to offer today, and we thank you for Val and the words that she's going to bring alongside that. Be with us, we know you'll be with us here, but continue to bless us and uh, let us leave here being richer for having come into your fellowship here. Amen. Thank you, Gemma. Well, do I look a bit lopsided this morning? <laughs> yes? Well, it's because my other half isn't here. I'm not, I'm not smiling happy. <laughs> No, I do miss him when he's not with me. Uh, but he is uh, with a group of the gents, the gentlemen from our car, who have gone off to a field somewhere near Swindon, I think it was called, uh, camping for the weekend, but part of the Christian Men's Fellowship weekend called Together. And um, he sent a picture through, and I think he posted it on Facebook, so some of you may have seen it last night, where it showed in worship yesterday evening, row upon row upon row of men of all ages and backgrounds kneeling, accepting Christ as Saviour and Lord. Some for the first time. It gets emotional. 
some for the first time and some as um, a re renewing of their covenant with God. Uh, Andrew said it was just awesome and you can imagine, can't you? He said the singing, you know, all these men all singing God's praises and uh, yeah, so they're going to come back full of it, aren't they, I'm sure. But we're here this morning and we're here in God's presence to thank him for our youngsters and to thank him for our fellowship here and to thank him for all the blessings that he's going to give to us, I'm sure, through worship this morning. Just want to acknowledge Brian and Lee. Thank you for leading worship uh, last Sunday and for taking up the pastoral care of particularly Frida's family um, and others as we are away again this coming week uh, before our farewell on Sunday. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Now, today I've called the meeting the Cracked Pot. Okay? And you'll, you'll figure out why in a little while. But we're going to commence by singing the wonderful song, Give Me Joy in My Heart, Keep Me Praising. Let's stand and have a good sing together. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> wonderful time of praise right at the beginning of our worship together and I know as it blesses us it will bless the heart of God also. Now we're going to sing another chorus now and it's oh give thanks to the Lord all you his people oh give thanks to the Lord for he is good let us praise let us thank let us celebrate and dance oh give thanks to the Lord for he is good. And uh, we're going to sing this through twice and then perhaps during the second time Benjamin, Henry, Violet and River Ashi are going to come and share a prayer each with us. So let's sing it through. Thank you.
God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the birds and the animals, the flowers and the trees, the lake and the streams and the sun that rises and sets over them each day. Thank you for creating everything we see. Thank you for the life we live and for making each person different. Amen. Amen. Dear God, thank you for my friends at the army. Thank you that you bless us with family and friends all around us. Thank you for giving us people to talk to and laugh with. I pray for all the people here today and that they have a good day. Help me to be kind like Jesus, to be a good friend to others and spread his love. In Jesus' name, amen. He wakes me up, he makes me sleep, provides me for the food I eat. When I cry, I call on him because I know with him I win. Even though the hardest day, I trust in him in every way. He's the one who sees me through. Jesus lives, I know it's true. With loving kindness, he smiles on me. Because he died, I am free. Lord, for all, I thank you so. I know you'll never let me go. Jesus, you are good and wise. I will praise you when I rise. Jesus, hear this prayer I send. Bless my family and my friends. Jesus, help my eyes to see all the good you send to me. Jesus, help my ears to hear calls for help from far and near. Jesus, help my feet go to... Help my feet to go in the way that you will show. Jesus, help my hands to do all the loving, kind things and true. Jesus, guard me through this day in all I do and all I say. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. We're going to sing that chorus once again. Oh, give thanks. And then I will uh, conclude with prayer. Thank you. And Lord, we want to give our thanks to you this morning, our praise and our worship. And we thank you for this church family. And we're aware that there are many missing today, those who are away on holiday, some who can't be with us and others who have difficulties that they face just now. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you would especially surround Frida's family as they mourn their mum and continue to visit their dad, Derek, in hospital. Please be with them, strengthen them, give your peace, we pray. We pray for David Clifford, who is still unwell and in hospital, and we ask, Lord Jesus, that he might be aware of your presence there with him, bringing healing and strength. We thank you that both Flo Creighton and Diane Bailey, having been in hospital, are now home. And we ask that you would continue to bless them with all that they need. We pray for this church family. We pray for all our families and our friends, those spe specifically facing difficulties just now. Lord, be that peace in their difficulties, we pray. And continue to bless us throughout this morning and throughout this day, we pray. Help us not to miss your blessings because we get so busy. But Lord, just make your presence known. For we ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Uh, we were very grateful to the singing company for singing at the beginning of our meeting. That was lovely, wasn't it? Well, we now look forward to the message from the YP band. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Henry is going to bring to us uh, this morning a cornet solo, uh, Whiter Than Snow, uh, a song that is based on Psalms 51, verse 7, where King David seeks God's forgiveness and prayers. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. <coughs>
well done, YP Band, <clears throat> and well done, Henry. I think you're doing really well. I can't believe how well you're doing on that horn that shrunk. <laughs> well done, you. Well done, everybody. You all have that part to play. In a sense, you were almost all playing solos anyway, weren't you? Because there's not many of you. But that was really, really lovely. Thank you so much. Now, I had a couple of people that said to me, before you leave, Val... Do you think we could have one of your famous Bible readings? So we're now going to have the Bible reading that is taken from Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 1 to 6, the Valerie Spivey version. Now, children and everybody, if you're under the age of 100, you need to join in, okay? So be ready, watch the screen, and give it enthusiasm. Okay. So Jeremiah 18, 1 to 6. The Lord our God gave a message to Jeremiah. Wow, that's amazing. God said, go down to the potter's house. The potter's house. Yes, yes, the house, the home of the potter. God said, I will tell you my message there. So Jeremiah went down to the potter's house. That's good. What did he see there? Jeremiah saw the potter was working at his wheel. He was using clay to make pots with his hands. That's clever. Yes, but as he worked, sometimes the clay was difficult and the pot was faulty. Oh no, that's not good. Ah oh, no, but the potter continued to work with the clay to make it into another pot. Oh, that's brilliant. Yes, he could have thrown it away into the rubbish, but he didn't. He continued to work with the clay and was able to make it into the shape that he wanted it to be. That's great. Then the Lord God gave Jeremiah his message. He said, I tell you this, I can do to you, nation of Israel, the same thing that this potter does with his clay. I hold you in my hands as the potter holds the clay in his hands. He then went on to warn the people to be obedient to God. So, friends, we are the clay, and God, the potter, holds us and lovingly moulds us. I think that's worth a cheer. <laughs> and another one. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now, to follow that, we're going to sing The Potter's Hand. Beautiful Lord, wonderful Saviour. I know for sure all of my days are held in your hand, crafted into your perfect plan. Lovely words. You can remain seated as we sing.
that's a beautiful prayer, isn't it? Hope you enjoyed singing it. But I hope you also made it your prayer this morning. We need him to take us and to mould us into the people he needs us to be so that he can fill us and use us. Oh, no matter what our age, guys and girls, God can use you. Now we're going to turn to our singing company and look forward to their message in music. Thank you. Jesus reigns, let's shout it from the rooftops. That's a really good song. Thank you very much indeed. Now we're all going to take part in worship as we give in our offering. Thank you.
thank you, Faith. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the many blessings you give to us each day. And now as we have given something back to you, we pray that you would bless and multiply our giving and that you would use it to extend your church, your kingdom here on earth and in this place. Amen. Amen. Now, we're going to have a picture come up on the screen, hopefully. I wonder if you know who this character is and which story he comes from. Any ideas what his name is? Chip. Chip. Thank you, little Haley. <laughs> yes, Chip. And which film, which story does Chip come from? Beauty and the Beast, yes, thank you. Yeah, Beauty and the Beast. Well, I don't know if you know, but the original story of Beauty and the Beast, uh, which was a 1740 French novel, told a very different story to the Disney 1991 animated classic of Beauty and the Beast. We know the story, those who have seen it or read it, know that the story is a magical tale and has within it the important message of learning to love beyond appearances. So looking beyond how a person looks and seeing within the beauty that lies there. Now you will know that Mrs. Potts, the housekeeper of the castle, has a son. And through a cruel curse placed upon the characters, she is turned into a teapot and her young son becomes a chipped teacup, known as Chip. Chip is a lovable character and despite his obvious chip and flaw he brightens every area of the castle cheering everyone and still allows himself to be used as a teacup. Children no matter how insignificant we might feel we can be a blessing to those around us. Chip was full to overflowing with joy. And as we celebrate you, our young people today, we want to thank you for being you. We're truly blessed by you, by all of you, each week. Our church family is all the better because of you. And we pray that God will fill you to overflowing with his joy. And that no matter what comes your way, his love, his joy will be evident in your lives. Now, when I was in the primary, which is a very, very, very long time ago, we used to sing a chorus. And it mentioned our cup being full. And it's the chorus running over. So I'm going to remind you of the words and the actions, okay? Running over, running over, my cup's full and running over. Since the Lord saved me, I'm as happy as can be. My cup's full and running over. Yeah, now we haven't got any music for this. Yay! <laughs> I had every faith in Jonathan. <laughs> he said he would make it up, so that's good. <laughs> so let's sing together this old chorus, running over, my cup full and running over.
thank you. Let's give Jonathan a round. Of I knew he wouldn't let me down. And he's nearly as old as I am, so. <laughs> and so we're reminded in that chorus that we're like a cup. And Jesus wants to fill us with his spirit, with his joy and all the fruit of the spirit so that we get fuller and fuller. And then we overflow for everyone to see because he died to save us and our joy is just so full. Now, oh. Now, unknown to Clara. Is Clara still here? Where is Clara? Can't find her. Is she at the back? Oh, she's behind. Yes, yeah, she's behind patients. Now, Clara didn't know that I was going to talk about cups and chip the cup. Um, but she arrived this morning with a gift for me and Andrew all the way from Jamaica. <laughs> yes, isn't that wonderful? Two new beakers. Both from Jamaica. I think that big one's going to be Andrew's. <laughs> and this more dainty feminine one is going to be mine. Do you have a special cup or beaker at home? I wonder if you like us in our family. When I was younger, uh, my mum had a certain beaker that was always the beaker that she drank out of. And my dad always had the same. And then when we got married, I had a beaker which was a nice floral china beaker because tea, Yorkshire tea, always tastes better out of china, you see. And Andrew always has had a Leeds United mug. And so whenever we've packed and moved, the beakers have gone with us. But then the girls, as they got older and liked to warm drink, they got their own beakers. And they're still with us in our cupboard. Um, so there is the beaker that's mine, the beaker that's Andrew's, and the beakers that belong to Claire and Rachel. Have you all got your own beakers? Yeah, I'm getting some nods. Yeah, yeah. It's funny, isn't it, how we like a certain beaker. Well, have a look at this picture. So here is a picture of a selection of mugs, beakers and cups. What a mixture of pots there are. There are some there that look really quite nice. There are some there that actually are rather cracked and have faults. There are some that look battered and even stained. And there are some that look ready for the bin. They're all different. They're similar, but they're different. And despite their appearance, they are all drinking vessels. They were all created and produced to be used. They were formed for a purpose. And this collection of cups reminds me of all of us. We're all similar, but different. Some of us are okay. Some of us have marks and scars. I could show a few scars from life lived. Some of us might describe ourselves as crackpots. Some may look wonderful from the outside, but hide the marks of sin, hurt and flaws. Just as all those beakers and mugs have been created for a purpose, we have all been created for a God-given purpose. We all need to be cleansed by God's grace. And we all, with our faults, need to be of use to God. We deliberately need to place ourselves into God's hands for him, the potter, to continue his work 
with us. Friends, let's always remember that none of us are perfect. And as easy as it is to see the faults, the cracks, the flaws in others, let's always ask God to show us our own cracks. Those areas of our lives where we disappoint the Lord and allow him to mould us into his image. Do you remember our Bible reading? And the potter who saw the potential of the unworkable and difficult clay, working through the difficulties and the faults to produce a beautiful pot. Well, our God looks upon us. He sees and knows our failings. He sees and knows our faults. He knows the times when we let ourselves down and certainly let him down. But you know, he never gives up with us. He never wants to just throw us to one side or in the bin. But he wants to work with us and to put things right and to make us and mold us so that we can be of use to him. So let's always place ourselves in God's hands for him to work with. Now, we're going to sing the chorus using the video, so I'm going to come off the platform because I'm not quite sure how long the video goes on and what it does, but we're going to use the video, Our God is a Great Big God, okay? Now, you're all looking a bit warm and a bit comfortable, so I'm going to suggest we stand up and get some air moving, okay, as we do the actions to Our God is a Great Big God. Let's stand. Isn't that a wonderful thought? 
that our great big God holds us in his hands. Now, I've just got one final picture to show you. This is the beautiful work of the Japanese known as Kintsugi, literally meaning golden repair. And this is the process of repairing ceramics, bowls, cups, traditionally with gold, leaving a gold seam where the cracks once were. Now, Japanese legend tells the story of a mighty warrior who broke his favorite bowl. And rather than throwing it away, he sent it away for repairs. When he received it back, the bowl was held together by ugly metal strips. And although he could still use the bowl, the warrior was very disappointed. And so this motivated craftsmen to find the alternative beautiful repair using gold. These are broken vessels made whole again, often seen as even more beautiful than before they were broken and of use. That's wonderful, isn't it? You know, when we accept God's grace in our brokenness, his grace repairs, heals, and fills us with his spirit that transforms and renews. We need him to work with us to show others the love and beauty of Jesus. He is all that we need. And as we rely on God, we will overflow with joy. And as he fills us with his goodness, we will be changed for all to see. May God's grace be at work in the brokenness of individual lives. May his grace be at work in the brokenness of this city of Coventry. And may the gold of his grace mend and heal the brokenness of this world. That's a very big prayer, isn't it? But we've just sung about our great big God, no works too hard for him. In faith, believe. Believe in him. Now, we've come to our last song. And as we sing this song this morning, I have a gift for each youngster. Oh, the YP band will be playing. Do you mind if they don't? <laughs> Is that okay? And play after, yeah? Can we have Jonathan? Just because Andrew and I have bought you all a gift, okay? And it's a cup, but it's a special cup, okay? You see, as water or liquid is poured into and fills up your cup that you're going to get, the colour of the cup changes. Isn't that exciting? And you know, that is a reminder, I hope, for you, as each day, I hope you're going to use your cups. Let it be a reminder of what God, through his spirit, can do and change in us. It's ongoing. It's daily. God is at work changing and transforming us. So, as we sing, I'm sorry, Paul, bless you. As we, as we sing, anyone 18 and under, we've got a lot of kiddies missing today, actually, so they will be here next week, will the cups, for anybody that misses out. But anybody 18 and under, come as we sing and receive this gift that is from Andrew and me. The Lord's my shepherd, 
And in the verse it says, and my cup, it overflows with joy. And his goodness will follow me. And I will trust in him alone. Let's stand. And children, come and get yourselves a cup from us. Thank you. Thank you. And now the benediction from Romans chapter 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. God be with you in and throughout this week. Amen. Amen. And God bless you all.